Hello folks and welcome to another Legend Scale review. Today as part of Prime Week we are taking a look at Hot Soldiers HSO2 Prop Sky Pillar which is their version of Optimus Prime. Now there's actually an, quite an interesting reason behind that name they've given him, uh, the one to avoid copyright issues. According to TF Wiki, now I'm not going to try and pronounce this but uh, one of the Mandarin names for Optimus Prime uh, can be translated as Pillar That Supports the Sky which references Chinese mythology. So it actually does make a little bit of sense that they've called him this. As it says on the box, he is a G1 style Optimus. Now, I can't remember if this design was a knockoff of an existing third party Optimus, or if it was original, but either way, it appears to be based on the Masterpiece MP10 design. Very bright, vibrant colors on him, uh, that very saturated red and blue. Not much in the way of paint. You've got that silver, a bit of yellow and blue there, uh, painted eyes, certainly not up to the standards of the higher end companies like New Age and Iron Factory, but it doesn't look too bad, um, just don't look too closely, I mean there's some places like that, fuel tank there, a little bit of paint bleed onto the surrounding areas. Uh, I really like the head sculpt on this guy, don't know what it is, uh, that, that just does it for me I think. Um, but in general, the sculpt is pretty simplistic. I mean, you've got some molded detail, but not an awful lot. The edges are a little bit sharp. Certainly the corners there will jag you uh, if you, you want your chance for him. Makes him feel a little bit cheap, uh, but that's just my opinion. Before we transform him, I'll go over all of his accessories. First and foremost, he has a trailer, which is very similar to MP10s. Painted silver with blue and white stripes. Uh, the door and ramp do open. And uh, if I take Iron Factory runabout here, he can't quite fit through the door just driving on, but uh, he does fit in the interior, as you can see there. So uh, anything smaller than a standard sized Iron Factory car can be transported. Little supports, you flip in when he's being pulled in trailer mode. Of course the whole thing can open up, just like MP10s. Yeah, these supports can fold out, but they don't extend downwards like in the larger version, so they don't really support much. But yeah, uh, trailer mode it can stand upright, as that kind of repair bay if you want it to. We also have a little matrix of leadership here. Uh, paint it silver, gold, and blue, and that can stow away in his chest. It can be quite hard to remove, so I'd recommend some kind of a tool, or even get your nail behind it there like that. Uh, you just want to be careful you don't scratch the paint, especially taking it away for the first time. He has his orange Energon Axe. And go in either hand. Uh, some special releases came with a blue one as well. Mine didn't, obviously, but uh, you might get one of those. Uh, not advertising the box, I don't think. His iconic blaster, uh, just unpainted black plastic. Nothing surprising there. A little roller with six rolling wheels, and he has a port in the top that the blaster can plug into. Then we have this Korean turret thing. Uh, I mean, the wheels don't really roll. That joint at the base of the Korean arm is very loose. But, I mean, it has all the articulation you'd expect. This can even open up. I don't think any minifigures would fit in there, but it can do it. Um, you get the trailer, it plugs in here. And a little hole in the top, so when you have it closed, it can poke out like a little turret, if you want to do that. But yeah, I mean, I usually end up just chucking most of this stuff in the trailer. Uh, I'm not using it. it. It's all the usual junk you get with Optimus Primes. It's there, if you want it. <laughs> now, articulation-wise, he has... A ball joint at his head, and then also you can use the transformation hinge, force more 
upward range if you don't mind the gap. Shoulders have a hinge and a ball joint. Biceps rotate. Elbows have a hinge and then the wrist rotate. Now, he does have a waist rotation, but yeah, um, this is probably my biggest gripe with the figure. You can't rotate it very far without things starting to look weird. Just the way he transforms, they give him the, they need this to get the legs where they need to go, and they didn't give him another waist joint, so that's all we've got. The hips are on ball joints, a little bit restricted in terms of clearance there. Uh, thighs rotate, the knees bend, and you can use the transformation hinge to get a little bit more range, although it looks a bit odd with that gap. And the ankles are on ball joints, so you get some tilt. And then there's hinge as well, so you get some forward and backward tilt. Not really any rotation, just with those bits at the side and the toes bend. <laughs> if for some reason you need that. But yeah, so his articulation is okay. Um, I'd probably be more positive about it if these hips weren't so loose. And then, of course, if it weren't for that rather awful waist joint. Still, not great, not terrible. For some size comparisons. There he is with Iron Factory Megatron. As you can see, he's probably a little bit too tall to scale properly with him. There he is with some more Iron Factory Autobots. Scale maybe works alright with the smaller ones, but not so much with Jetfire. There he is with the other two Legend Scale Primes. And there he is with Runabout, a Lego minifigure, and Core Class Sound Wave. Now for the transformation, it really is as standard as you can get for Optimus, so you, if you have an MP10 or anything similar, this will be pretty familiar to you. So, first things first, close up the feet and press them into the legs. Then you can open up the backs of the legs and then collapse those down on those double hinges. Close the panels back up. Then rotate the waist around and flip them up into this position. So then next thing, we'll lift up the arms and uh, move these side bits down. Quite stiff. Uh, with those down, rotate so that the wheels are touching the ground and put the front bumper together. That'll tuck in under the abs section. Now you can open up this back panel thing and rotate the head down into the body. Close that back up. Now we will rotate the hands 180 degrees. Open up the arm panels like this. Then there's a little panel covering the top of the lower arms there. Then you want, want to open that the whole way until it sits flush with the bicep. Let's see him on the other side. That will unlock a second hinge we're going to use to bend the elbows 90 degrees. Not the actual elbow joints, this second joint we've just unlocked. And then what we want to do is just kind of maneuver the arms into the body. You have to watch because sometimes those corners catch on the smokestacks. It'll be a little bit annoying. Then, with this done, close up those panels and then use the fuel tanks to rotate those around and then press them into place. They'll tab in and secure everything together. So there he is in truck mode. It's definitely G1 Optimus Prime. <laughs> Paint scheme is still very basic. Uh, no detail on that front bumper. No headlights or anything. Uh, no real robot mode extras unless you count that you can kind of see the 
we have section through the back there. But uh, of course, you can bring in the trailer if you don't like that. Now there are two little notches in the truck bed that will line up with the tabs on this trailer hitch. Um, those tab in. You can find them. Come on. Yeah, there we go. And if the connection is pretty secure. Got a uh, full 180 of rotation there. Uh, a few more size comparisons, just again, we'll bring run a muck back in. And there's the Lego minifigure. So that's Hot Soldier's Prop Sky Pillar. Definitely on the lower end of the scale, as far as Legend Scale Primes go. Especially when you look at what New Age and Magic Square are coming out with soon. Uh, I mean, I would say you pay for what you get. But I actually think this guy is a little bit overpriced, on, in all honesty. I think he's usually somewhere between 30 to 40 pounds, whatever that is in dollars. Um, and in my opinion, there are much better options available, even within that price range. Uh, I can't speak for them all, but I mean, you've got the DX9, the Jinbao, uh, Magic Square 1.0, Magic Square 2.0, New Age, Hasbro Core Class, Dr. Wu and so on. I mean, definitely consider the other options available before settling on this one, uh, even if you do like the look of it. But yeah, and that's all I've got to say for today. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out the other videos on the channel if you enjoyed, and goodbye.